Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'll show you how to evenly space objects along a path in Illustrator. I'm going to start with just a circle inside a regular document. I'm going to fill it with black and I'm going to turn off the stroke. So the circle is the object I'm going to move along a path in Illustrator. Now with the circle selected I'm going to the brushes panel up here and I'm going to click the flyout menu and choose new brush and then pattern brush and click OK. So these are the settings for my pattern brush. There are a few things that we need to focus on here. Firstly, if you're using an earlier version of Illustrator you won't have an auto generated corner tile. So I'm going to just deselect this for now. So I'm going to show you how you could create one. In later versions of Illustrator, I would just go and pick the auto sliced or auto overlap because you just want a circle as your corner tile. And you can create that same circle as an inner corner tile as well if you want to. We're going to leave all these options just as they are right now, but we do want a colorization method. So we want to be able to colorize these dots if necessary. So we'll choose tints. Notice here that these particular dots are skewed out of alignment. They're not circular any longer. If you click add space to fit instead of stretch to fit, you'll say they'll look much nicer. So you just want to make sure your brush looks good before you begin. I'll click OK. Now in earlier versions of Illustrator, if you don't have those corner tiles at this point, you can just go to the selection tool and just drag and drop this particular circle into these empty spaces. So just hold the Alt or Option key as you do that and click OK. Now if that doesn't work, here's another way of doing it. I'm going to open the swatches panel and I'm going to drag my circle into the swatches panel. Now when I go to the brush and double click on my brush here, you'll see that I get the option of that circle here as the corner tile and it's also available as an option for the end and the beginning tiles. So as soon as you create something as a pattern swatch it then becomes available as a tile for a brush in Illustrator. So I'm just going to click OK. I am going to leave the strokes as they were. In actual fact my circle just got destroyed in the process so I'm just going to delete that. Now let's have a look and see what happens when we brush with this brush. So I'm going to select my brush, going to the brush tool and I'm just going to draw along a path. So we get a series of circles along our path. If we want these spaced apart we can easily do that. With our line selected I'm going to click here on the options of selected object and this opens up the options for this particular line and I can increase the spacing by for example 50% but I can continue to increase it as much as I want. I can increase it 150. And as soon as I tab away, you can see that these objects are evenly spaced apart. So if you're okay with objects that look like this, that's fine. You know how to do this and you're off and running. But I just want to show you something that might concern you. I have just drawn a different shape path. This is a sort of loop path here. Let me just show you what it looks like. This is my path. You can see that it twists very steeply to begin with. So when I apply my brush to it, I'm getting some distortion of these circles. Now, if you don't want distorted circles spaced along your line, then let's have a look at a more sophisticated way of solving this problem. So I'm just going to delete everything right now. I'm going to draw a horizontal line. It's going to be for argument's sake, it doesn't really matter how big it is, but I'm going to make mine 75 pixels and I'm going to make the angle zero. The angle zero is really important. I'll click OK. And this is just a line. I'm going to select my line and I'm going to make a pattern brush out of it. New brush, pattern brush, OK. All we want is the line and we want colorization method tints in case we want to recolor it and we can add space to fit. and We'll click OK. Now I'm going to create a line that's going to be quite wiggly. So let's just click away from the original line. Let's go to the brush tool and let's create something that's going to wave around quite a bit. 
I'm going to select this line. I'm going to make sure that my brush is applied to it. And because I want to space these things out a little bit, I'm going to come into the options of selected object. I'm going to add 50% to the spacing, which is going to give me dashes along my line. I have selected add space to fit. So let's just click OK. And you can see here that we've got bendy lines. I'm going to select over this shape and I'm going to choose object expand appearance and then object ungroup until ungroup is no longer an option. Just get rid of the initial path because I don't need that any longer. So now I have a whole series of dashes, some of which are bent, that are forming this sort of circular shape. I'm going to select over all of these and I'm going to turn my curvy lines into straight lines. I'll choose object, path, and then simplify. And I'm going to click here on straight lines and I'm going to set the angle threshold to 180 degrees. And that makes each of these little dashes a perfectly straight line. I'll click OK. So now we have our sort of curvy line shape made up of simple dashes. Let's go and make a circle or a shape that we're going to repeat along this line. So I'm just going to make this a circle and I'm going to make a brush out of it. So I'm just going to click New Brush and it's going to be a pattern brush. I'll click OK and all I'm going to do at this point is turn my tints on as my colorization method, add space to fit and click OK. And I can delete my shape. Now if I select over all of my dashes, I can apply my new pattern brush to these dashes. And what's going to happen is that each dash is going to get a single circle. I'm going to open up the options of selected object. I'm just going to scale down the size of these dots. Now if I go too small, there are going to be two dots per dashed line. We just want to make it so that there is one dot per dashed line. You can see here we've got perfect circles this time. Even though we're going around in a curve, these circles are not being distorted in the process. When you've got your circles or your shapes the size you want them, just click OK. Because the original lines were all evenly spaced, so too are these circles. Now this is obviously a more complex way of getting shapes evenly spaced along a line, but if you want the shape to not be distorted, that's the way to do it. I hope that you've learned something in this video that you didn't already know about Illustrator. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to my channel and please give it a thumbs up. You might also want to visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.